Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I'm going to do another sew with me kind of video. Recently I just launched a few blouses onto my website, um, one of which is behind me and they're called the Nora blouse. Um, and I thought it would be fun to just show you how I make one. Whilst I'm filming this, there are still a few available if you are interested, but I made a very limited number of the blouses so make sure you head over there and check them out if you are interested they also come in a few different colors so i thought i may as well show you the different colors i'm going to be making the black and white floral one today which is this one here but i also made it in this really gorgeous brown polka dot and it's got a nice contrasting piping in cream at the front and it's got all this little ruffle detailing at the neckline and it's super cute and then i also have one of these white blouses left these are made using vintage um, pillowcases so this has an mch um, initial monogrammed onto the front i don't know if you'll be able to see i also did a fully pink version um, this one is so cute. This is the last one left in the pink. This one was also made using a vintage bed sheet and this one has an M here monogrammed on the front, if you can see, which is super lovely. And I dyed this one a really light peachy pink. So I absolutely love this one. I was very tempted to keep this for myself. And then the final one comes from a vintage tablecloth, which was mainly linen. Um, but I also mixed it with a bit of a cotton sheet so it's got linen in some parts and cotton in others and I also dyed this a peachy pink but this one's much more sort of a caramel peach but it's got this gorgeous little bow um, embroidery on the front so I absolutely love that. So that is a selection of blouses I have up on my website at the moment. So now I'm gonna get on and show you how I make this blouse. I've already cut out the pieces for it, but I will show you the shape of them when I'm about to construct them. So the first thing you actually need to make are the trimmings to go with the blouse. So I've chosen a contrasting trim of this polka dot, black and white polka dot. And so we need to make these long ties and the piping that goes across the front and also the ruffle pleated neckline. So yeah, I've already made the pleated trim for the neckline, so I don't need to show you guys how to do that. Um, you can probably buy something like this in the haberdashery section and trimming section. The same goes for piping. You can usually buy pre-made piping if you don't want to do it yourself. And then for the ties, I've just cut these strips and ironed them in half and we're gonna stitch one centimeter width and pull those through with a bobby pin and I'll show you how I do that. So welcome to my new machine. I don't think I filmed a video working on my new machine yet. The lighting surprisingly seems very good here. Um, I do look very shiny though, I'm not sure why. <laughs> because my skin is literally the driest thing ever and yeah, it looks shiny. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna turn my machine on and I'm just going to use my guide to make sure I stay in the right place so that it's one centimetre wide all the way down. This machine has made sewing so much quicker. It's kind of noisy, <laughs> but that's okay because I'm right at the end of the house. <laughs> then using my fabric scissors, I am just going to cut away the excess. I definitely made these way too wide. I did not need to waste this much fabric, which is obviously annoying. Then to pull these strips through so that they are facing the right way around, I take my little scissors and I do a tiny little cut at the top, just like that. And then I take my bobby pin and I just hook it through the top and then go inside the main section and then you have to sort of jiggle around a bit until you start to get it to pull over the bobby pin and then you just keep going bit by bit 
and eventually it all turns the right way around and then you can go and iron it and it'll be nice and neat. This is my favourite bit, the last bit where you're pulling it the right way around. It's just so satisfying. <laughs> Ta-da! And then you have one really long strap that you can go and iron and then I cut them into three. And then I'm going to cut these into three, but first I take off any ugly ends, like the salvage of the fabric. And then I just hold on to each end and divide the fabric into three, like so. And then I just chop one end and the other end. And then you have three separate ties, so you need six in total for this blouse. And I'll just do it again for the other one. Chop. And chop. And there we go. There's all of the ties done. So I'm gonna work on the sleeves first, and this is what we want the sleeves to look like once they're ready to go onto the bodice. Um, sometimes I just prefer to make the sleeves first because then it kind of feels like you've tricked time a little bit. <laughs> and they're very simple to make, so I'm gonna show you how I make them. So this is the central piece for the sleeve, and I'm just gonna be attaching sections to either side of these curves, and I'm also gonna be attaching a strap at each side so that you can adjust the sleeve and tie it up or have it loose. That's a better view. So I'm basically just stitching those together, but whilst I stitch it, I have a notch in this side here which shows me where I need to put the strap so that it gets trapped in the seam. I've attached the sides to the centre and now I'm going to go in and do a top stitch down this seam, just down here, so that it sits into place. I also went and overlocked the back of the seam, so I just do a quick top stitch. It's now a little bit later, my parents have just got back from being away in Cornwall, so I was catching up with them and um, then I had dinner. And now I'm going to just finish the sleeves off with you guys and then I'll do the rest of the blouse um, after the weekend because I have a very busy weekend. <laughs> so yeah, I've just top stitched along that seam. So that is now lying nice and flat. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just fold it in half and stitch down here. And this seam will sit underneath your arm. So I've just overlocked that seam that I've just sewn. And I just thought I'd show you how I press that open. Um, so I use this little sleeve ironing board and um, I just pop that seam over the top like that. And then I will press it all down to one side. So yeah, I will just press that flat and then I turn it inside out, all the right way around and press it again just so it's really nice and flat for when we go and do the next bit, which is hemming the sleeve. So for the next step, I'm going to be hemming the bottom of the sleeve. And for this, you just wanna make sure that all of the loose threads are cut off. So when I do a rolled hem, I like to start at the back where it's not gonna be seen too much. So I can do a back stitch and I just roll it over once and then once again, the width I want it. And then I put that underneath my sewing machine, do a little back stitch and then I take from further away and just do the same thing. I roll it once and again and I make sure I pull it really tightly because that helps a lot. Um, 
so make sure it's down and then and then once that's pressed that will look super neat and tidy so we're nearly done with the sleeve I'm just going to add a really long stitch a double row of long stitch just along the top of the sleeve so that we can gather it in So here's one sleeve, so I'm going to find the loose ends of the double row of stitches I just sewed and I just loop it around my finger and gently pull it and it's already gathered up. So I just sort of manipulate that along a bit and I don't really know how much I need to gather it by just yet until I put it on the sleeve, um, on the armhole even. Um, so I just usually gather it a little bit and leave it to sit like that whilst I do the bodice. And then we can come back and do the bodice another day um, because it's now getting quite late. And when it gets late, that is when I make very silly mistakes with sewing. I just am not good at working late anymore. If I really have to work late, I will. But if I have the option not to, it's often best that I don't. Mm. So there we go. Now we have our two sleeves ready to go in once we've made the bodice. It's Monday now and I'm going to get on and finish this blouse with you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do today is attach the front and the back top pieces together and then I'm also going to do the same with the inside facing. Um, so that's what I'm going to go and do now. I'm just going to sew along the top shoulder just along there and then I will overlock it as well. So the front and back have now been sewn together, overlocked and pressed down and the next stage is to use the ruffling that I've already made and just roughly tack it around the neckline and check it's in the right position before I attach the facing to the front and sandwich this in. So now that the ruffle neckline is tacked on to the neckline, I can then sandwich the front with the back facing and go around and stitch all around the neckline and the opening at the back. And whilst I'm doing that, I will also need to add the ties at the back. So a few things to think about when doing this. So this is what the blouse is now looking like now that I've sewn the ruffle into the neckline and then at the back it just looks like this with the ties at the top. The next step is to add the piping to the front so I'm just going to stitch that along the front there and for that I need to change the foot on my machine and I'm changing it to a zipper foot style foot so it goes super close to the um, piping. So whilst I have my piping foot on, I'm going to attach the front piece of the blouse to the piped front section. And I've just done a running stitch at the top, um, nice and wide, so that I can gather up the top and pin it on to where the piping is, like so. And then I grab my front piece, pop it down and pin into place the front piece of the blouse. So when I do this part I have a notch that matches the centre to the centre of each piece. So I usually do the end that has the double stitch to stop the thread from coming off. And then I find the middle and then I just manipulate the gathers to fit the area it needs. And then I sew that on with the zipper foot so that I get nice and close to the piping. Mm -hmm. 
and there we go the gathers are now sewn into place with the piping sandwiched in the middle it's the next day again i didn't have enough time to finish yesterday because other things popped up so i had to stop so i really think we can finish the blouse today because there aren't too many steps left so yesterday i managed to finish the main part of the bodice and the next step is to add the side panels down the side and I don't always add these down the side of blouses because they don't necessarily need them but I find that with an oversized fitted blouse it helps to have panels down the side because it sort of makes it more um, rectangular in a way um, so the blouse doesn't just stick out at the sides so I'm just going to attach those to the side of the blouse I've now sewn the sides together so everything is looking more like a blouse now and I also overlocked and pressed down the seams inside so they're looking nice and neat and then the next thing I need to do is do a rolled hem so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the sleeves and pinch a little bit over, roll it over and stitch it down. This time for the rolled hem I'm only doing about 0.5 um, so keeping it very small and delicate. So I'm going to start at the back and I'm just going to fold over one little section, pull it tight, put it under the foot. and do a little back stitch and then I'll leave the needle down and I will roll a section a bit further away and then you just want to make sure you pull it tight and then sew along there and just carry on all the way around the bottom of the blouse Now that I've done the rolled hem, I'm going to put it on my ironing board and just flatten it down so it's nice and flat. So the hem has been sewn and it's nice and neat on the inside. And then the final thing we have to do is add the sleeves. And this is where you thank yourself for making the sleeves already. And so all we have to do now is put the sleeves in the armhole, sew it up, overlock it, and we're done. So with this pattern, I match up the line that goes down here with the piping at the front. So that's my main notch. And then also, obviously, the top is a notch as well. So because I've sewn up the sides, you have to do this sort of method for putting the sleeves in. So you just take the armhole, and the sleeve and then I like to just hold the sleeve at the top and you just fold the blouse inside out so the main bodice goes inside out and then you get the armhole here so you can pin how you need to around here and then you can sew it up. <laughs> Sleeves are now in and the last thing I do before I go and overlock the sleeves is just check that they're in perfectly. So I check the gathering at the top to see if it looks too bunched up in one area and I check around, all around to check that it's definitely in the armhole properly and then I shall overlock it. sleeves are on and she is now finished. This is actually the last one I have enough to make for this blouse so she is ready to be on the website. I'll try this on for you guys in a second to show you what it looks like 
on a body. So here we have the finished blouse on. I love the fit of it. It's just such an easy blouse to wear with jeans or a skirt. Um, you can obviously tuck it in if you like. So I'm just wearing mine with the sleeves fully tied up and just with some light wash jeans. They also look great with black jeans or black leggings if you want a more casual look. Super happy with how it turned out. I like having it with my hair up as well because you can see the details in the pretty ruffles around the neckline and that is a view of the back. So yeah there's no piping on the back because it's quite an oversized fit at the back um, and the piping wouldn't have worked so well. I just love it so much. It's super easy and obviously you can untie the sleeves and you can wear them as more of a, a big oversized t-shirt style. That is that, that is how I make the Nora blouse. Um, so as I said I will leave the link to my website where there are still some available. I hope you guys are all having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.